Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You are very welcome here indeed. So I've had a few comments on my NMN videos saying that not only is NMN not effective, it could actually be doing some harm. And some people mentioned they watched the Brad Stanfield video and they're not too sure now what to do for the best. Could I look into it and tell them what I think? So they asked, here it is. So let's start at the beginning. NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, has one role and one role only, and that is to raise NAD levels. When it comes to David Sinclair, all he has ever said is that NMN is an NAD precursor, and as such, when it enters the cell, it then converts into NAD. NAD is responsible for hundreds of metabolic functions, and without it, we will be dead in less than 10 seconds. David Sinclair has never said that NMN only raises NAD in human blood or that it does raise NAD in skeletal muscle. All he has ever said is it raises NAD. And although some studies have looked for other things that NMN could possibly do, remember that these extras are not its role, that role being to raise NAD levels. That said, some studies have returned positive results when NMN is used for other things, such as insulin control in pre-diabetic women, grip strength, walking speed, drowsiness, which is great, but those that do fail should not really be seen as negative news. So why do I say this shouldn't be classed as serious news? Well, if you use something in the way that is designed and it works, that is not newsworthy. Take, for example, driving a car. If you use it for something it was not intended for and it works, then that's good. And that is indeed newsworthy. But if you use it for something that it was not designed for and it fails, it shouldn't be a surprise. Neither should it be classed as serious or newsworthy. What NMN skeptics tend to say is based on my motor car analogy, where it's used for something that it was not designed for. Let's see what Brad Stanfield had to say about the NMN human trials. I read all 12 NMN human studies to figure out if there are any proven benefits and whether we should use NMN supplements. There have actually been 16 human studies when it comes to NMN, and I cover all of those in this video. So I'm wondering why Brad only chose to look at 12. Let me know what you think in the comment section of the YouTube video. In this next clip, Brad looks at a study where NAD levels were tested and they did rise in blood, but they did not rise in skeletal muscle. He also talks about a similar NR study. So coming back to the second study, they took 25 postmenopausal women with pre-diabetes. 12 were given the placebo and 13 were given NMN at a dose of 250 milligrams per day. They found that while the blood NAD goes up, the muscle NAD doesn't, and that's the first key takeaway. The entire theory of supplementing with NMN is to boost NAD, but if NAD doesn't increase in our muscles, that's a big red flag to this entire theory. These troubling findings match up with other studies looking at a different molecule called nicotinamide riboside. That study also showed that nicotinamide riboside supplements do not increase muscle NAD. So he says that NMN does not raise NAD levels in skeletal muscle, and this is a big red flag. But he doesn't explain why it's a big red flag. We just have to take his word for it. And he uses a phrase like these troubling findings. But remember, this study showed that there was a positive effect on controlling muscle insulin sensitivity. And remember, the dose was very small. It was only 250 milligrams per day. Moving on, let's see what Brad has to say about the next study. The third NMN study is the first one to look at strength and fitness. It combined exercise with varying doses of NMN, up to 1,200 milligrams per day. And while there was a small improvement in power at the first ventilatory threshold, overall there were no differences in VO2 max, work rate, or peak power after six weeks of treatment. NMN also did not alter body mass, free fat mass, it had no effect on grip strength, push-ups, or sit and reach tests. Which is a really disappointing finding. After all of the hype with NMN, you'd expect to see robust improvements in exercise performance, but that's not what that study found. So there was a positive result with regard to improvement in power, which is good because NMN's not designed to do that, so I see that as a positive. But Brad decided to focus on the things that it didn't do, but then again was not designed to do. And he used the phrase, very disappointing with all hype around NMN improving physical performance. Now I think he's talking about, I hope he's talking about human studies because that's what this video is about. I haven't seen any human studies where the results um, say in a hypey type of way that NMN improved massively physical performance. So I think that these comments really about 
what NMN didn't do, but what was not designed to do, are basically just his opinion. So let's take a look at the next study where NAD levels were checked, but also well-being. The next, published in May of 2022, was the first study to look at well-being. It again confirmed increases in blood NAD, but there were no improvements in walking endurance or measures of insulin sensitivity. And when it came to the well-being scores, there were no differences between the placebo group or the NMN group. Which is odd because after all of the hype with NMN, particularly on social media, you'd expect to see robust improvements in your well-being scores, as in how well you're feeling, by taking NMN. But that's not what the study showed. There was no differences between the placebo group or the NMN group. And I think what's likely happening is that social media influencers, when they start taking NMN, they're starting to improve their diet, their exercise, they're prioritizing their sleep, and that's the reason why they can feel these improvements in their body. It's probably got nothing to do with NMN. So NAD levels were raised in blood, which is good. And the other things they were tested against, which would have been a bonus, came back as negative, so not really newsworthy. But Brad decided to focus on the NMN hype again and said, I think what is likely happening, so it was a guess, and at the end he said, it's probably got nothing to do with NMN, so probably and not definitely. So Brad thinks that taking NMN was a trigger for people to get their life into order with regard to sleep and also diet. It may also be that it was people taking NMN for long enough at a high enough dose, then gave them extra energy and better sleep patterns. That's my idea. He's got his. They're both just opinions. Nothing is seated in science. So let's see how Brad decides to sum up the 12 of the 16 NMN studies that have been conducted to date. Let's summarise what we've found. From the short-term 12 studies that we've got, NMN does appear to be safe and it does boost blood NAD levels. However, there are no improvements in muscle NAD. There's also no improvements in body composition, blood pressure, cholesterol, HbA1c or insulin levels. There may even be an increase in insulin levels, which is not what we want. There's a possibility of improved insulin sensitivity. However, two out of the three studies showed no improvements. There's also no improvement in VO2 max. It's unlikely that there would be an improvement in grip strength or walking speed. There's no improvements in sleep, fatigue, well-being, hearing, cognition, or arterial stiffness. So on the left side of his chart, NMN does raise NAD levels and it is safe for humans to take, which is great. Everything else, as far as I'm concerned, is not relevant because NMN was not designed to do that. Although he did say that um, NMN may increase insulin levels, this is concerning. So I think longer trials with more people using different doses is definitely warranted. Uh, now, Brad's delivery is usually fairly negative, which is fine. That's up to him. I have no problems with that whatsoever. He says he does the research so you don't have to. If he's done that research, there's 16 trials. Why he only focused on 12, I don't know. I'll leave that one with you. Let's now move on to Nicholas Verhoeven, or Nick. He's a PhD candidate in molecular medical and cell biology who also holds a master's degree in exercise physiology, and he has a YouTube channel called Physionic. So let's see how he addresses the studies that looked at the things that NMN was not initially designed to affect. So the first question is, does NMN actually increase NAD levels? Because if NMN doesn't even do that, we might as well just call it quits now. Fortunately, many studies have checked exactly that and shown increases in blood NAD levels as seen here. You can see that at time zero, that's baseline, both groups, NMN and placebo, experience equivalent NAD levels. However, as NMN is actually consumed over time, NAD levels only increase in the NMN supplementing group. So I think that was a very fair review and probably where Brad would have left it. Uh, the reason I like Nick is that, in my humble opinion, he digs deeper into the analysis to give another perspective on the data. Well, if you were to ask these researchers, you'll find yourself massively disappointed because all of these studies found absolutely no effect of NMN supplementation. Just as one example, let me show you some of the data. The orange line is the NMN group and the blue line is the placebo group. If you see there's an asterisk that's above a time of supplementation, then that means there's a difference between the two at that time. So fasting blood sugar, nothing. HbA1c, nothing. Insulin resistance, nothing. Triglycerides, HDL, LDL, you know the drill, nothing. But as your sharp eye has noticed, total cholesterol did change. It 
increased in the NMN condition. But let's not blame NMN for that. It happened after they stopped supplementing and most likely the effect was actually driven by a drop in the placebo condition. So I wouldn't worry about this. Next, Nick looks at where NMN was successful in doing things other than raising NAD levels. Okay, so that's one example. But one drawback of that study, although it did include men and women, is that the dose is arguably too low because they use 250 milligrams a day. Still, I would like to point out that it did show an increase in NAD from NMN supplementation before, and that data came from this very study. So clearly NMN at 250 milligrams does increase NAD levels. So yeah, can't really have cognitive dissonance here. Either way, Let's say the critique is that 250 milligrams is entirely too little. Well, then we can lean on this study wherein the researchers used five times the amount, well over a gram, and here's that data. Now, there's zero effect across all measures, including LP little a, uric acid, insulin resistance, cholesterol, and much more. Okay, but both of these studies were in people who are in their 30s and 40s. So maybe there's an age and health factor that we're missing. So I think a very fair summary of the studies here from Nick. He does say that NAD is raised by NMN. And he also proffers the hypothesis that it could be useful for older people or for people who are unhealthy. And anecdotally on the channel, I've noticed that people who are younger or fitter or both have said they don't really feel any difference when they take NMN, as opposed to those who admit they're older or they're more unfit, if they take in a larger dose, they do see more positive results in a much quicker timeline. Um, Brad's summary of the studies tends to be NAD is raised by NMN in blood levels, and he shuts that to the side, and then he goes on to talk about all the things that it doesn't do, but then again, it was never designed to do. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Uh, it may not seem like it, but I do actually write a script for all the videos that I produce. Um, I pondered long and hard on the summary of this one. I wasn't too sure how I was going to address it. The first thing I will say is please check out the links in the description below and go and watch each of the videos separately. And if you haven't watched Nick's channel, you should really go there. It's a fantastic scientific study resource. Uh, it's obvious as a PhD candidate with a master's degree, he's been taught how to critically analyze scientific studies to make sense of the data and then to compare them to similar studies so he gets a more holistic view of the efficacy, in this case, of NMN with regard to cohorts, um, dosages, etc. Um, I'm still going to watch Brad's channel. I do like all of his videos, or majority of his videos. I think they're very interesting, very informative, very insightful. But I think when it comes to the interrogation or the, the deciphering of scientific studies, I'm probably going to lean towards watching a lot more of Nick's channel.